can you see it? It's the coronavirus. It's right there, in the water. It's on the beach, right there, in the sand. When I created this channel over five years ago, I never meant for it to be a talking head channel, and I've definitely never used it to present political or controversial topics. My channel was never intended for the purpose of expose. It is supposed to be a feel-good channel, one that highlights the enjoyment shared by two people living out their lives in their special small little chosen quadrant of the planet, their chosen paradise. How obvious though that times have changed. While the continued focus of this channel going forward will always be to help inspire anyone looking to pursue their own happiness. I have reached that point where I feel like I must deviate from my established normal and throw a wrench into the fan. If I don't, I'll forever regret not doing so. While the real intent of this video is to show a world that has been turned inside out, not solely from the so-called invisible enemy, but mostly related to poor government leadership and some really illogical decisions. There are government atrocities taking place across the globe, but the one we are most concerned with is the one taking place right here in the place we call home. Before deciding to call Guam home, we lived in the Philippines for four years. If an American expat learns one thing while living outside his or her home country, it is that the inherent constitutional freedoms that we all grew up with and have become so accustomed to may no longer exist. Here on Guam, just as on the mainland, we possess those same certain unalienable rights. However, as many legal scholars will argue, none of these liberties are absolute. They can all be abrogated for compelling grounds. And, as in the case of COVID-19, the compelling grounds are the public health emergency. When we look at Guam's COVID numbers, a clear picture emerges, one that does not compel one to believe there is a public health emergency on Guam. Guam has one of the lowest infection rates per capita, currently at one half of 1%, or 0 .00549. We also have a very low hospitalization rate, with less than 17 persons currently hospitalized and four patients currently under intensive care. These numbers clearly do not warrant the level of draconian measures that have been applied to this island, and the people of Guam are beginning to notice. Not to mention suffering extreme hardships. However, the government of Guam seems to be at an impasse, having backed themselves in a corner. Recently, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the governor's son, not to mention some other government officials, all tested positive for the virus. All seem to have recovered after experiencing mild symptoms. The reactions of many islanders here lead to the question of how this governor can lead when she and her staff cannot comply with their own mandates. Her answer to her own infection, created out of fear, was to return the island to pandemic 
condition of readiness one and the most severe lockdown to date. In a letter to the editor of the Guam Daily Post newspaper, Lee Weber writes, What possible loss of freedoms will be next? No clear thinking person can honestly believe that this virus can be dealt with by home lockdowns, small business closures, and similar behavior. Good leadership would have by this time been working to crack down on the critical sources of the spread. And a local popular doctor posted on social media yesterday, whose stupid idea was it to forbid walking or jogging on the beach by yourself? Neither the governor or this do-nothing legislature has formulated a plan, one that would protect both the island's citizens and its economy. Up until just last week, the island seemed to be surviving on some level of life support, with its head just above water. This latest lockdown move could surely further cripple the island's economy, forcing more permanent business closures and putting any chance of a healthy recovery beyond reasonable reach for years to come. This latest extreme lockdown has all but shut everything down, including the island's banking system. This governor continues to allow government of Guam workers to supposedly work from home while drawing their normal, and for some, additionally inflated government wages. The private sector seems to be unessential in the governor's eyes. Pursuant to the governor of Guam's lockdown order, all government of Guam parks and beaches shall be closed to all activities, where in the past, parks and beaches remained open for individual use for mental well-being and physical fitness. A recent press release from the Guam Police Department states, residents could face criminal charges if they are caught at local beaches or parks for any reason. They will be prosecuted for criminal trespass. Social media has been a buzz for days about this latest shutdown, and many islanders are questioning the overreach of this latest mandate. Over the last few days, there have been a number of us folks working on and promoting an organized, peaceful assembly to take place today in the heart of the popular tourist district of Tuman. This peaceful protest is designed to bring needed attention to the severity and negative impacts of this lockdown which is dragging down Guam's economy even further, contributing to an immense suffering that the people of Guam do not deserve. We will be there to show our support and to capture some of it on video. Are we worried about the virus? Not really. It will be a responsible gathering and social distancing and masks will be in play. Are we worried about being arrested for violating Guam's current lockdown mandate? No, I believe the First Amendment has our backs on this one. And guess what? You're all invited along, so it's time to go. Oh, we're here. <clears throat> we're early. Protest is uh, getting ready to start. Cops have already been here, cruising by, checking things out. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. I'd say good morning, but I know it isn't. <laughs> Feels like it. Do you miss me at all? Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall. So why didn't you, why didn't you call? So many years has gone by But I think about you, about you all the time Looks like you're changing and all But why didn't you, why didn't you call?
many years has gone by But I think about you, about you all the time Looks like you're changing and all But why didn't you, why didn't you call? 